Hi folks, I'm Silmar UK and welcome to my Let's Play video series of Encased RPG Early Access. Last time we completed our orientation and we're about to head off to our actual posting to start our adventures under the dome. I'm Silmar UK, you can find me on various social media as Silmar UK including Twitch, Instagram and Facebook. You can find me on my website silmaruk.net and you can find me on my YouTube channel of which the bit.ly link is up on the screen at the moment and also on my Twitch channel which is silmaruk. So thank you very much for joining me and let's get into the game. So we've just finished with the science orientation in the research zone so now we need to get onto the transport. Yeah. You've completed combat training, learned how to scan relics, and collected your weapon and uniform. The crash course is over. Head to the waiting room and wait for the bus that will take you to the Magellan station. Okay. I'm guessing it's going to be this way. Please come here. Certainly. Let me just check in here for any items I can pick up first. Don't mind me while I do it. Disinfectant. Okay, we have a fellow Blackwing member. The tall blonde man in his 40s touches the brim of his black cap and extends his hand for a shake. His fingers are stone hard. The badge on his broad chest reads Adolf Schmitz, Head of Security. Schmitz is studying you back, disapprovingly, it seems. Oh. He wipes a bit of lint off your shoulder and adjusts the colour of your overalls. Your uniform could use a wash. Too bad. I'm Adolf Schmitz, head of the security service. You were to be spent to Magellan, but the situation has changed. Oh. The black nods towards the door behind him. I've got an urgent order for you. Your help is needed at a nearby object. Mr Kingsley is waiting right now to give you your assignment. He will tell you everything himself. Adolf steps aside, glancing down at your boots. He, sh boots. he shakes his head morosely. Okay, so we can agree and proceed to the guard room. Said I have business elsewhere, which I do not. Or Blackwing. Ask why he needs me, but not the other black that arrived with you. Seems fair. Why does he need me, but not the other black? Schmitz leans forward, frowning. Because it's an order, recruit. What do you think you're doing? Showing up in a dirty uniform and questioning your orders? Things he requested you. That's all you need to know. I will agree and proceed to the guard room. Smith steps aside, inviting you to enter. Come in, please. The video phone is on the wall over there. Ooh. The giant display glows welcomingly when you approach. A red light comes in under the screen, still hood. The camera has switched on. A grey old man with high cheekbones appears and squints out at you from the screen. You copy. He leans close to the camera, his glasses glittering. My name is Martin Kingsley. I am Chief Officer of Magellan Base. I would have liked to have met you in person, but I was delayed by unforeseen circumstances. One moment, I'll grab your file. He reaches for something outside the screen and brings a thin folder with your name on the cover into view. Apparently, your file. Kingsley opens the folder to thumb through the pages. He marks one page with a pencil. Why did you choose Blackwing? There are other divisions such as suitable to your skill. Kingsley's waiting for your answer. So, certainly you've always imagined yourself as a kind of mercenary killing for a price you're comfortable with that. Better that developing your combat skills is important to you. Give him a wolfish smile, chaos and destruction, that's what you embrace above all. I think we'll go for answer number three. <laughs> Martin nods and writes something down. Fairness has much to offer, varied assignments, our own training grounds and the opportunity to move up through the ranks. Kingsley closes the file and folds his hand. Thank you for your reply. I learned a little more about you. Now I want you to learn a little more about us. Keep in mind this is not a rehearsed speech. He assumes a serious expression. When the dome was discovered in 1971, it became a scientific and media sensation. 
a worldwide phenomenon and likely the most significant discovery in the history of mankind. Kingsley drums his finger on the unseen desk, his gaze focused somewhere beyond. I see, you were enticed here by radio advertising, TV, movies and interviews, billboards at every turn. Ernest wants the world to see the dome as a stage where something merry and fascinating is going on. But now that you're actually here, I want you to see the real picture. You can't make out his eyes behind the glare on his spectacles, but he seems to be staring directly at you. Here's the truth. Nobody was waiting for us inside the dome. It's neither a treasury of technologies nor a cemetery of the ancients. Perhaps what we're doing now is diffusing the world's most complicated bomb. Will our mission thrive? I believe so if we work together and everyone does his part. He looks back at your file. I say do what must be done because that's what the concept of the five rings is all about. Kingsley points at the black at the camera. You are black ring now. Your duties are simple enough. I'm going to spell them out for you. Everything you do is to maintain order and peace. Once people panic, they will kill each other much quicker than the dome ever would. Putting the folder aside, he sits back and stares at you in silence. It's now so quiet that the ticking of a clock can be heard through the speakers. Things he sighs quietly. You were probably waiting for some boilerplate welcome speech, but I prefer to talk about real world problems. Glad to meet you. Say that so are you. Martin nods slowly. I apologise once again for this long distance meeting. Now as we don't have much time, I'd like to get to the point. I'm sure you're curious why you were taken off the bus to Magellan and brought here instead. He moves closer to the camera. I'm going to show you a short video. Please pay attention. Okay. Get ready to get out of the base defences into the outside world of the dome where you can only rely on yourself and your companions. Check your ear once again and go to the and go to the large orange truck waiting for you in the garage. Get in and continue your journey to the Nashville facility. Later in the game, you'll be able to acquire your own vehicles, which will become your home and give you an unprecedented freedom of movement. Martin noisily clears his phone. Maybe you've heard about Nashville Base. By preparing the materials for this mission, I came across a short documentary film about the complex. I think you should watch it. Speakers produce a hollow click. Purple, grey and black spots flicker on the screen. A blurred title, The Cronus Archive 1971-1974, was used in the production of this recording. It appears at the bottom. Watch out. The shadow of an aeroplane flies across the faded yellow desert. A cheery voice fills the room. Every day our researchers uncover more and more of the dome's secrets. There is no, no doubt the underground structures officially known as objects are organised according to some pattern. So early on, the importance of the forefathers' relics was considered insignificant. Watch out. The desert dims into the blackness of a chalkboard. White lines begin to form a schematic of a dome. The narrator continues. By 1972, however, many important discoveries had come to light in a period of only a few months, and the construction of research bases adjacent to more promising objects began. Personnel moved into Ankara in May of 1972, and within half a year, Boston and Desso were also brought into service, though the biggest discovery was yet to come. The picture changes to a chasm suffused with electric light. Workers, scientists and engineers are bustling about everywhere. The speaker's voice seems to come from a distance. In November of 1973, a massive network of underground caves and a structure of hitherto unseen complexity was discovered in sector C-12. Soon afterwards, the construction of C-12 Nashville began. The camera glides through dim caverns as the silhouettes of bizarre mechanisms loom up from the dark and arrives at a massive dig site crowded with earth-moving machines and tired mines in our journey. The speaker continues, T-12 Nashville is an innovative research complex located at the top of a primary relic mining location. The complexity of the subject is unique. Communications, the film abruptly cuts out and the Kingsley face appears. The rest of this information is classified, but hopefully you get the main idea. Nashville is a very special place, requiring people with special qualifications. Technically, you don't have the clearance level for this, but I'm wavering it for this mission. Let's not push him on this. What's the task? Part in the justice classes. So the task. Nashville base stopped transmitting yesterday evening. Oh, that isn't good. Reconnaissance group was sent out early today, but we haven't heard anything from them yet either. The chief officer rubs his head. Normally I would never have given this task to a novice, but I just don't have enough people. He looks down at the documents again. 
Furthermore, the group was lacking some of your specialization. I decided that a visit to an established base like Nashville didn't require an arms escort. That may have been a mistake. King's is looking into the camera once more. Your task is to get to Nashville, figure out whatever's behind the communication problem, get in touch with your group, and work with them to solve the problem. The chief officer carefully returns the documents to the folder. He notices his hands tremble slightly. Go downstairs, the bus must be waiting for you in storage. This task is urgent, but a small delay is acceptable if there's anything you need to settle here first. That is all. Any question? I have no questions and I'm ready to get started. Kingsley's hand reaches towards the camera. Great to hear it. Take care of yourself. I will talk to you later. Okay, cool. So we're now level two. We have skill points. Cool. Right, well, we're carrying a heavy weapon. Unfortunately, all of the skills related to heavy weapons do not actually. Okay. Improving our heavy weapons a bit still seems like a good idea. level one okay, apparently that requires mechanics level one which we don't have it's not listed at all Actually, survival's not a bad idea, is it? Especially because it's that binoculars. I assume you've got to say... We don't seem to have mechanics, so we would have to find someone to teach us it. But how about criminal? We've got two more points. Okay, I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop those into a combat skill, so let's just drop them into light weapons. So survival is now two. Cool, we got some more abilities there.
anybody tell us anymore? Oh no, I'm not going to ask him again. He's just going to shout at me some more. Let's just double check before we do anything. Okay. Do I get in here? An Irish tractor truck is waiting at gate 3. The vehicle's number has been scrubbed off by the desert wind and sand. This must be the transport king he spoke of. The driver's side door is half open. A young woman is sitting behind the wheel, her legs down into one side. She offers her hands. Hi, I'm Clara, Clara Morgan, and you're the novice going to Nashville, right? What's your name? How do you feel? Do you mind if you're smoking the car? The handshake is surprisingly firm. Clara smells of soap, some fragrance, and slightly of gasoline. Um... Introduce myself. Introduce myself first. She smiles. Glad to meet you too. I've got nuts. You want some? Or candy? Oh, I've got chocolate covered fruit. Try some. Do you know candied fruit are dried, then boiled in syrup? You climb into the cabin and plunk yourself down on the passenger seat. The tractor is bigger on the inside than it looked. Wooden rosaries hanging from the driver's mirror. The radio murmurs quietly. Clara slams the door shut and grins. Here we go. God willing, we'll get there before the storm hits. Mind if I turn the radio up a bit? Do you like music? Blues? Gospel? I, for instance, like... Can't make out exactly what Clara likes. The roar of the engine smothers the rest of her senses and the truck lurches into motion. Okay. So, oh, we've not seen this before. Looks like we are travelling. The Dome Meteorological Bureau was wrong. On the North Highway, you were overtaken by a strange, faintly glowing storm. The truck soared, and soon after, the screen of your terrace went black. And as quickly as it descended, the wailing desert whirlwind vanished. The very first mission began with an accident, a bad sign to say the least. Right. You don't make it to Nashville. At a low saddle shaped mountain pass, the engine overheats and rapidly loses power. The truck goes to a stop. Clara opens the hook and steps back from the steaming radiator. Here we go again, there are always some problems with this gas station. In these parts everything crumbles into dust, anomalies. Blue stares anxiously at the dark funnel cloud dancing on the horizon. Let's see if she can fix it. Clara looks at you anxiously. Yes I can, well I think I can. A parson says he only tests us with trials we can draw. We can draw. Blue looks at the engine again. I'll fix it, but it would be better for us to find some protection against this anomaly. Otherwise, we will not go far. Ask around at the gas station while I'm working on it. See if they know anything. I'll go with what she said. Clara looks around at the open room. Alright, let's agree then. I'll get everything in the meantime. Shading her eyes with one hand, she evaluates the black Trista hovering on the horizon. We still have time to make it before the storm. Oh, cool. There's some characters. Okay, cool. Getting rats inventory. 
Uh, radiation 106. Okay. Right for us. Back back. Okay, so it's not the radiation, but we're going to need some stuff to protect us from the radiation. Radiation signal stage one. Okay, we're going to try and purge it then. Um, radiation is zero. Minus 200 radiation. We had about half of that, so that was slightly premature. We need some kind of Geiger counter. Tanks are empty and produce a hollow echo when you tap on them. We got some stuff for that. Nice. Military grade merch kit. So we take all of that. Pile of paper. I'll leave the place before I talk to the guy. Myself. All right, let's talk to this guy. Scruffy old man with a wild and matted beard is sitting in front of the checkout terminal. The badge on his blue jumpsuit is in a long since breached away. The name Aaron Melville is written there in black marker. The grody picks up a magnifying glass and peers through. He begins poking at the keyboard with one knobbly finger. The computer plays a short tune. Mates, the system declares. The old man angrily sets the magnifying glass aside. Grandmaster, you're a piece of metal, not a grandmaster, and a cheat to boot. He raises his head to squint in your direction. Hey, come on in, we're open. You're better off not eating here and there's nothing to buy, but come in anyway. What is it you want? The shopkeeper rises from his seat and he notices he's sporting a peg where his left leg should be. Tell him your trap broke down. The old man looks over your truck through the dust-covered glasses. I know, I know, rubber turns into dust and grease seems to evaporate. No need to wonder about it, my dear, there's an active anomaly hereabouts. The gas station's really only three years old, though it looks more like 33. Ask him if he knows how to protect the truck from the effects of the anomaly. Elwell sinks deep in thought. Well, yeah, I know, sure thing. See the gas station over there? 
some four path of thingy grows out of it small and small round thingies fall out of it sometimes. Look in the basement, there must be just a couple of them there. Blue removes a small key on a long cord from his neck and gives it to you. Okay. Red four, right. Thank you. We definitely need some of that. I want to check out that radiated area. I can't do that. If I can't, scissors and some springs. There's a fridge. Packaged water. Fifteen and fifteen. Yeah, we'll just keep adding that. Okay. Everything out there. Mm -hmm. 
But we've got to get these knuckles, haven't we? There's a relic, we've got to scan it. find a relic down there. So I might be missing something, but I want to explore a bit anyway, so... So that was the gas station. Gunsmithing bay. Okay. all seem to be empty. Have a bit some pieces. Thank you. 
So this is indeed the gas station. We will search everything. Interesting that showed is empty when it wasn't. Let's try the basement. Points thirty or thirty six. Single shot. Twenty per cent chance. Probably won't work. Okay, cool. Um that was much more effective. Back up. 66. Let's try a burst. And 
managed to avoid all sorts of nastiness there. Um, reload our primary weapon. Health-wise, we don't take any damage from that, but we're taking plenty of damage from the toxic surge. We haven't saved yet, and it would probably be a good idea to do so. Why did it go and do that to me? Grass apple, an apple shape. That's already often found inside of normal zones that prove provoke premature deterioration of mechanism. Interesting, this effect has the exact opposite effect. Right. Okay, so there seems to be some problems. So we are going to say Someone out there is getting angry. So we're going to end this episode here and we will carry on with the altercation of the gas station and exploration around the area, including that irradiated zone, next time. Thank you very much for joining me. And if you've enjoyed this, please leave a like, consider a comment and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. But I'm enjoying this game so far and we'll see where we get to next. Thank you very much for watching.